horseshoe is back. What's going on, Colts Nation? Welcome back to another episode of the Bring the Juice Colts Podcast. So, wanted to bring you guys a quarter evaluation of the season so far. Obviously, not quite a quarter because, you know, they got the 17th game, but you know what I mean. Either way, we're going to kind of look at a few things and we're basically going to talk about what we've seen and evaluating what this team has done and everything so forth. So I think the first thing we can take a look at and I think was one of the more controversial ones coming into this season was how the quarterback was going to play. So, so far, what I have seen from a Carson Wentz five touchdowns to one interception. I see a very good start for Carson Wentz, given everything he has had to deal with beginning this season. We look back on Phillip Rivers. Everybody likes to keep making that comparison on Phillip Rivers and what he did in his season with Frank Reich versus what Carson is doing now. Well, I mean, a couple things factor into that. You know, Phillip Rivers did not have quite the offseason that Carson Wentz was having, but also Carson Wentz had to deal with the injury, the freak injury, has had to deal with the sprained ankles due to the fact that his offensive line has been terrible so far this year. You know, T.Y. Hilton is obviously out for the time being, and we don't know when he's going to return. So both of these quarterbacks have had some controversy to have to go over when it came to coming in for their teams. But I would say that how Carson has played through the first four games versus what Phillip Rivers did. Now, this is my opinion. You can have a different opinion on it. I believe that Phillip Rivers was the more accurate and more efficient quarterback. But I also felt that through the first four games of the season, Carson Wentz was able to make more big plays than what Phillip Rivers was able to make through his first four games. We remember the first six games of the season, basically the first, yeah, I think it was about the first five games. You know, it took a while for Phillip Rivers in that offense to finally start clicking on all cylinders. And this offense is still yet to even click on any cylinders right now. But What we've seen is Carson Wentz controlling the football, not turning the ball over like a lot of people thought he would. And so far, that is a good plus that even with everything going on, all the injuries on the offense, everybody not really playing up to standard, a bad play design and play calling in certain areas, that Carson Wentz has been able to overcome it to an extent and has been playing some very efficient football which is how we want him to be playing. Now, outside of this, outside of this last game against Miami for the rushing attack, it's really been, you know, lackluster. And, you know, there's quite a bit of concern with that. And mainly it's due to the fact of just how underused some of these running backs have been, basically. You know, Jonathan Taylor with only 10 rushes, really hasn't had any chance to run over 20 times yet in this season, has only rushed 15 or more times twice this season. You know, the the Colts have done multiple games where they've kept the ball out of Jonathan Taylor's hands in the run game for a lot of different times. And, you know, that's very, uh, very interesting. And in my opinion, very idiotic that you would do that to get rid of your best option at running the football and you, you know, continue to do it in these other ways. Naheem Hines really hasn't been utilized that much in the run game either. Now, I mean, granted, the Colts offensive line has been struggling a little bit as well. So that's not necessarily all on Coach Reich and Marcus Brady. And obviously the first couple weeks, Jonathan Taylor, Naheem Hines we're not basically running the ball the way they normally should be. You know, they they seemed like they didn't follow, you know, game design. They didn't follow the holes very well that the offense did create. Overall, hasn't been the level that we expected this team to be at. We did not expect this team to be so abysmal at running the football the way they have been. 
They finally were able to do it efficiently against a weaker Miami front seven. But the rest of the time, something is always holding the offense back with the run game. It's something always is. Whether it's the offensive line, whether it's the play calling or play design, I don't know. I mean, we can obviously all go back to the Tennessee Titans game and be like, why did we only run the ball 16 times when we're averaging over five yards a carry? But uh, that's beating a dead horse. Passing game, you know, again, what we have seen from this offensive line and from these receivers, there has been some good and a lot bad, actually. The receivers, a lot of time, are not gaining a lot of separation. Sometimes Carson Wentz is at fault where, you know, he misses some throws and he's taken a few sacks that he probably could have avoided. And other times this offensive line has just been abysmal. I mean, it's been bad. The right tackle position especially has been abysmal since the start of the season and has not gotten better and has not been fixed. So. Things are very odd in that regard. So, you know, we we kind of expected this offense to be kind of slow with the amount of injuries that they've had. But I think for evaluating what this offense has done this year, I think we can all sit back and say just we were not prepared for how bad this offense has looked in a lot of different aspects. This football team can definitely move the ball down the field. They have shown that multiple times through all these games, and they have shown the ability they can get down the field. But ultimately, it depends. It matters where they are on the field that matters here. And a lot of that is in the red zone, not being able to convert a lot in the red zone, having bad play calling in the red zone. All of these things are really starting to pile up on this Colts offense, and it will hinder them useless against some really good teams if they cannot get that fixed. So evaluating this offense right now, not been good outside of Carson Wentz in a majority of these games and Jonathan Taylor in a few regards. You know, outside of that, this offense has just been not fun to watch right now. And for the defense, sorry to say folks, but doesn't get any better. As a matter of fact, I actually think it gets worse. This defense, I mean, we've again stated that, you know, this defense everywhere is just roughed up. I mean, defensive line, we continue to get guys hurt for unbelievable reasons. Uh, our secondary has never been fully healthy yet this year. Uh, Xavier Rhodes just came back two games ago and has been getting burned ever since. Rocky Sin wasn't available for this last game, and Isaiah Rogers wasn't doing great against the jump balls that Devontae Parker was getting, and obviously Kari Willis wasn't. So, you know, a bunch of different injuries on the secondary that have just not worked out in their favor. Darius Leonard also dealing with an injury that has, you know, really affected his playing. He has just not been the same linebacker. He's been much slower. He certainly hopes that he can get that worked on very soon. Says his ankle's getting better each week. It's just taking a while. I certainly hope it doesn't take much longer because we really need to start getting that going. And this team, outside again against Miami, who had a very, very, very weak offensive line, who, in my opinion, might be worse than ours, at least as of currently, they have not gotten a pass rush. They've not gotten a pass rush. They've been unable to stop the run. You know, we talked about it a few weeks ago, like what it meant to lose guys like Justin Houston and Danico Autry and Anthony Walker, guys like that that were very good at stopping the run. Okay, let me rephrase that. Justin Houston wasn't great at that. He was more of the pass rush specialist, but Danico Autry was good at stopping the run, and Anthony Walker was our run-stopping linebacker. And, you know, this team has just not really done a lot to change it, which is weird because we continue to run zone, even though we haven't gotten a pass rush, and we continue to get torched almost every week. 
And, you know, we can obviously point that back to coaching. We've been pointing at the coaches a lot this season for how this season has started. You know, it seems that despite all the injuries and the concern with how the team is playing, just seems that there is a lack of wanting to adapt, which is very weird, you know, at least from my perspective. I know the Colts have definitely tried to do a few things, but obviously a lot of those things aren't working. We saw DeForest Buckner and Kamoko Ture called a players only meeting this week, you know, stating that this team needs to start stepping up and that players need to start taking more accountability for what is going on out there on the field. We can certainly hope that that will be the case. But again, evaluating the defense, defense has not been great either. But it definitely has had its moments where it held Seattle to seven points in the second half and gave our offense every opportunity to come back into that game, and we just couldn't do it. And the Rams game, outside of the one game that the Rams lost, I mean, we were the one time that the Rams didn't blow out somebody that they were playing. You know, we took it all the way down to the final few minutes. Had our offense had Carson Wentz out there, that outcome might have been different. Like I said, I mean, the defense, while it wasn't great in that game at all, you know, giving up all those yards and touchdowns to Cooper, it still gave our offense a chance to get into the game. It did. The Tennessee Titans, I mean, they were gifted a lot of turnovers and made a few plays. They were able to slow down Derrick Henry. But ultimately, again, you know, just not being able to convert on offense and, you know, giving up a few touchdowns in the end just continue to haunt this team. I mean, I'm not even going to say anything about the, uh, about the fourth quarter for Indianapolis because they were in garbage time and they just gave up those points to Miami. Thankfully, you know, the offense was able to respond. But outside of this, guys, I mean, this is certainly not the start that a lot of Colts fans wanted. I think a lot of Colts fans anticipated the Colts starting one and three or maybe end up one and four when they play Monday night football against the Ravens. I just think it's not the losing that's been the problem. I think the problem has mainly been just how this team is playing and just how many people continue to get injured, how there seems to be a very big lack of accountability for a lot of things that are going on, particularly the injuries and the scheming and everything else. So not a great start. And hopefully when I do this in week eight, I'll have something that I can evaluate better on. Hopefully we will see this team start to transform a little bit and make some better plays and win some games and we'll see where it goes forward. But overall, what we have seen has not been great, but it can only really go up from here. This team has played some bad football for quite a bit now this season, but there are a lot of chances to potentially go up. And I think this team can go up. Hopefully we can see a few more guys get healthy this week and we see it happen quickly. Thank you guys again so much for the support. I greatly appreciate it. Let me know what you guys think. And as always, go Colts.